great work. And I am really, really excited about today's episode. We're going to be looking at how to do great work. And this is inspired by Paul Graham's article on how to do great work. The article is 11,756 words. And it came out to be 40 pages. So I've read the article. It's a great article. So I came up with a few points that I think will be of benefit to you in your life and in your business if you apply them my name is paul fo so welcome to this session if you are listening to this on instagram thank god for your life if you're listening to this on youtube fantastic if you're listening to this on the podcast thank god for your life so we're going to have a good time today so let's get into the subject for today so <clears throat> the first takeaway from that article on how to do great work by paul graham paul graham is a founder of y combinator again invested in facebook invested in airbnb and all those great companies the first idea is that you make your make yourself a big target for luck first big idea make yourself a big target for luck that's a great that's a great point isn't it make yourself a great a big target for luck how do you do that he said that for you to be a big target for luck You want to increase the number of things that you do. That's how you become a great target for luck. So one way that you can do that is you want to travel to more places. You want to read more books, more biographies. You want to have conversations with people that you ordinarily do not have conversations with. That's what you want to do. You want to have conversations with people that you ordinarily do not have conversations uh, with all right so you want to have conversation with people that you ordinarily bankale williams banky you are next on my podcast man i'm announcing to the whole world because i'm live on my podcast i'm live everywhere banky you are next i just interviewed steve harris yesterday it was an amazing amazing session so i'm saying this right now to my podcast listeners all over the world we are the 25th most distributed podcast in the world right now so hey banky bankale banky williams is coming for the podcast next. Banky, can you type a big yes to that please because this guy's a mindset engineer you don't want to miss his episodes i'm banky i'm going to talk to you after now after i'm going to talk to you all right so you say you want to make yourself a big target for luck how do you make yourself a big target for luck read more biographies read more biographies um have conversations with strange people because some of the ideas you'll get are from people that are not in your immediacy so let's say if you are a pastor for example you want to have conversations with a biologist you want to have conversations with a lawyer you know when you have those kind of strange conversations certain ideas just drop for you another thing that can increase your target for luck is you want to increase the surface area upon which luck lands upon by putting out more stuff out there you know it's only when you do more stuff that you get more opportunities i'll give an example if there are two women that you know after work one of them goes home but after work the other one does not go home she goes out she hangs out in a cafe in a coffee shop and all that which of them has the higher probability to get in a date which of them your your guess as good as mine it is a second one because that one has increased the surface area upon which luck will land upon for her that's the first point the second point is your a field or a niche is not a person you don't owe them loyalty i like this point from the, from the article Paul said it's so powerful. He said your, your field or your niche is not a human being. You do not owe them any loyalty. I thought that was powerful. So some of you are in a niche right now. Maybe you're in a marketing niche. Maybe you're in the small business niche. Maybe you're in the loyal niche. Maybe you're even in the real estate niche. If the niche is not paying you, you've been there for a while, you're not seeing results, you do not owe that niche any loyalty. It's not a human being. Your niche is not your boyfriend. It's not your husband. It's not your father. It's not your child. You don't owe your niche any loyalty. It is not a human being. Why are you so committed to it? If it's not working, figure out another niche. I'm not saying you change the target of what you want. You may want to tweak your niche a little bit because if it's not working for you, why bother? Why bother? Paul Graham says, your niche is not a human being. You don't owe them any sort of loyalty. That's what he said. And that's very, very, very powerful. The third thing he said is, I love this. He said, uh, said, it is harder to 
to start work than to keep working. And that is so powerful. I want that to sink in. He said, it is harder for you to start work than to keep working. You all know that it takes time to build up yourself to start a project. But once you've started it, you're right. Once you've, once you've kicked away the, the law of initia, the momentum begins to build. And that's so true. And, that's, and then he said something very, very powerful. He said, when you're on the threshold, when you're on the threshold or, or when you're on that threshold of whether you start a project or not start it, it is not a flaw in your character. Oh, my God. This guy said, that is not a flaw in your character. It is just the nature of work. Whoa. Whoa. I like that. He said, if you feel that initia, you know, that in, in that you don't have the tendency to start a job, right? He said, it's not a flaw in your character. It's just the nature of work that when you kick start it, you tend to go on. I think it's the I think it's the I think, uh, Isaac Newton's law of motion that we can we can tie to this. He said that um, every object will stay in a state of rest until an external force is exerted on it. Because when you exert the external force on it, it just keeps going. Guys, if you're enjoying this, uh, drop a comment, drop a heart. You know, sh- take a screenshot, tell your friends to join. If you're listening to this on the podcast, you know you want to you want to tell your uh, drop a comment or something. Put, give me some heart if you're if you're enjoying this. All right. So 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 you so said that that is the flaw. It's not a flaw of your character. It is the nature of work for you to have initia. It is a nature. There's nothing wrong with you if you wake up in the morning and you don't feel like doing the thing. There's nothing wrong with it. It's not a flaw in your character if you wake up in the morning and you don't feel like picking up the phone to call. If there's nothing it's not a flaw in your character if you wake up in the morning you don't feel like doing the work it's not a flaw it's, 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 it's our work is designed he said however for you to overcome that threshold of initia for you to go beyond that threshold of initia you want to trick your brain to tell yourself that you know that you, you know what you are doing he said you should exaggerate it in your head that what you are doing is important to humanity for example, there's a lady watching me right now. Her name is at the name of a business is called I think it's uh, May uh, May May Chips. So uh, uh, May Chops is it, is it May Chops? I think she does healthy food. For example, maybe she wakes up in the morning. She doesn't feel like you know producing those healthy food. She can she can trick her brain and say I am on a mission to make the world a healthier place. It's just a tricking. Now, once you trick yourself that way and you start the process, it, it says that you just keep going and going and going. So, initia, there's nothing wrong with that when you're in that threshold when you don't feel like doing anything. All right. So that's the f- point. The third, the the fourth point that I, I love so much in the article was so good. He said that there are two types of procrastin- procrastination. There is the per day procrastination, and then there is the Per project procrastination. I thought that was pretty beautiful. He said that the per day procrastination is when you say yourself that when you say to yourself that I will do it someday. I will do it tomorrow. I will do it next tomorrow. And you know the thing is that your tomorrow has never come. Many people tomorrow never came. They kept saying I'll do it tomorrow. They kept saying I'll do it next year, but they never did it. That tomorrow never ever actually um you know the, the, that tomorrow never never actually came. But he said the second type of procrastination is the per project procrastination. He said this is even the most dangerous one. He said because the per project procrastination is a kind of procrastination whereby you are working on something, but you're not working on the real priority. Wow. Last giddy, last giddy to own homes. Thank you so much. You have been typing all the points. I'm really grateful for that. Thank you very much. God bless you. Whoever you are, God bless you. Um, yeah, so yeah. So he said that there is a per project procrastination and then there's a per day procrastination now the per project procrastination is a kind of procrastination whereby you are doing a project but you are not working on your high priority project this is so powerful this is so powerful this is so powerful so you are procrastinating but you are not procrastinating on the right or you but you're not doing the right project you are doing the work but you are not doing your high priority work so i mean if somebody looks at you doing a per project procrastination it looks as if you are working but you are not working on your high priority work did you get that did you get that so 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 he said that's a very dangerous way for procrastinating 
Oh my god! I thought I thought that was that was that was very very beautiful. That was, I thought that was that was so cool. And then the fifth point from the article that I thought was very very brilliant. This is a great article. It's eleven thousand words, not a lot of words. Eleven thousand words on forty pages. That is basically like a book that you just read. I mean, I read the article this morning. I got up by. I usually wake up. I got up by. I, 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 I started reading the article by five a.m. on the dots, and I I, I was I read it till. Uh, I thought it's 10 minutes past 6 a.m. this morning. It's such a good article. Now, it, the fifth point here, he said that the more unanswered questions you have, the more solutions you will get. Oh, my God. I thought that was beautiful. I thought that was beautiful. He said, in fact, you should be rich in unanswered questions. Ah! Oh my goodness. That was such a powerful point. He said, you've got to be rich in unanswered questions. That's the truth because... The more questions you have, the richer the quality of your life will be. The life you're living in today, everything you see, is questions that somebody has asked and that somebody has answered. Now, the more questions you have, the more unanswered questions you have, the richer your business will be. That's the truth of the matter. The more, I like what he said, he said, you're working but not working on your high priority work. That's the truth, yeah. So you want to you want to cultivate great questions. You may want to have like a notion page whereby you can store all of your questions. You got to be rich on on in unanswered questions. Be rich in unanswered questions. I thought that was so beautiful. Because if you want to ask a question, question like how can I get this better? How can I do this better? In fact, you may want to qualify that statement to say being rich in empowered unanswered question because some questions are disempowering yes for example the question like why do bad things always happen to me that is a disempowering question it doesn't it doesn't it doesn't improve the quality of your life but if you ask yourself a question like what can i do to make five hundred thousand dollars that's it that's it that's that's that is an empowering question so you want to be rich in unanswered empowering questions so but i but i want to be poor in unanswered disempowering questions i thought i thought that was so powerful i thought that was so brilliant so that's the fifth point now before i tell you the sixth the seventh the eighth and the ninth and tenth point let me talk about the sponsors for this episode of the paul four podcast or those of you who are watching this on instagram this episode of the paul four podcast was powered by sales factory whatsapp community i have a sales i have a whatsapp group where i teach sales and marketing every single day from monday to friday I drop a nugget every single day. Then we review a book in my WhatsApp group every month. We have reviewed seven books this year. We are going to be reviewing our eighth book this year. And the title of our eighth book is going to be this book. We are reviewing this book in my WhatsApp group called The Everything Store. I'm a bookworm, so it's a great book. I'm going to review that. If you want to join my WhatsApp group and join us in our next book review, it's 5000 hours a month to be in my WhatsApp group or 15,000 a quarter to be in my WhatsApp group. If you live outside Nigeria, it's six pounds or so to be in my WhatsApp group. Who would like to join the group right now? Say hi. Those of you watching on Instagram, if you want to join the group, you click on the link on my Instagram bio and join the group. Those of you who are listening to this on the podcast or watching this on YouTube video, the link to join the WhatsApp group is on the show notes. Click on that link. You type it and you go straight to it. And that's not all. If you join the group, and you refer somebody else to join my WhatsApp group, you will get a 20% commission, affiliate commission for that. All right, so we have 60000 for a year, 15000 for a quarter, 5000 for, $5, for a month. Now, guess what? As long as the person is renewing their subscription, you will have that commission for life. And I have people that have been with me for three years. So can you imagine if you are making 20% on somebody's renewal for, for three years? What that can do for you. And if you bring in a hundred people, you can imagine what that was going to happen. So click on that and join the group. Those of you who want to join, do click on the link on my bio and join the group. Let's continue. The sixth point, the sixth learning point is the risk, that risk is proportionate to reward. I like this point a lot. He said risk is proportionate to reward. He said take big bets that have high expected value. He said take big bets that have i expected value because if you don't risk you don't take action you will not see the results so he said take big bets as long as you know that these big bets they have very high expected value 
That's what he said. I thought that was brilliant as well. And then number seven, I love what he said in number seven. I thought that was so great. That was so good. He said, use the advantage of youth. Oh my God. Ha! Ah, I want that to sink in. He said, use the advantage of youth. Now, what is the advantage of youth, you may ask, according to Paul Graham? He said the advantage of youth is energy, time, optimism, and freedom. Ah, that's so good. Some of you listening to me right now, you are young. I'm in my 40s, but I've moved two times in my life. I used to live in Port Harcourt. I moved to Lagos with my wife and children. With children. I used to live in Lagos. I moved to the UK with my wife and children. You have to take, you have to, you have, you have, that's what youth gives to you. It, it gives you time. If you make a mistake, unko. It's not a do or die. You can reverse it. It's not a do or die. Some of you, your brain has been telling you, change industries. Change industries, please. Change industry. Change jobs. Change jobs, please. You are young now. Make all the mistakes that you can make now. It's not a do or die. You can reverse it. If you change job and the job doesn't go well, you can change another job. You got to experience life. Come on, man. <laughs> Oh my God, I'm enjoying this class. Oh God, what a class. Yay, yeah, 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 yeah. This class is so good. Then he said that the advantage of age is knowledge, efficiency, money, and power. Oh my goodness. He said the advantage of age is knowledge, efficiency, and power. Now, here's what he now said. He said with great effort, you can acquire the the advantages of old age and still keep some when you are old i thought that was powerful again oh my goodness so again the advantage of youth is energy time optimism and freedom the advantage of old age is knowledge efficiency money and power so he's saying that as you are young what are you waiting for take advantage of your youth make that move if you want to change jobs, change the job. It's not a do or die affair. It's not a marriage relationship. If it doesn't work out for you, change another job. You're still young. You're still young. Your mind is saying to travel to another city. Travel to that city. Go rent a house in that city. What's the worst that will happen? If it doesn't work out for you, you're going to look for another job. <laughs> oh, my goodness. What do you mean? Make the move, man. Come on, man. <laughs> and then number eight he said you got to work hard you've got to work really really hard i love a quote what he said that it was so powerful he said it's he said it may not be possible to prove that you have to work hard to get great job done but the empirical evidence is on the scale of the evidence for mortality <laughs> The guy is saying, as sure as, as us as human beings, one day we're going to leave this earth. And so it is as sure as it is. If you don't work hard, you will not be successful. That's what the guy is saying. There's a direct relationship with working hard and working smart to you becoming a success in the things that you do. And then number nine, he said number nine, in many fields, it is almost inevitable that, you, that, that your early work uh, will not in, in a way, copy the work of the people that have come before you. He said there's nothing wrong with you copying people that have come before you. That's why you need to read. You need to study the field. Look at people that have come before you and what has made them successful before in the past. Look at them. There's, there must be something that made them successful before in the past. Look at the things that made them successful in the past and you know learn from them and build up on that. And then the last one, number 10, is that... Um, is that um uh, I, I'll add one more said number 10 is that, is that he said that a lot of people he, he said a lot of the best people in any field in every field right they are usually located in one city or one spot if it's technology it's silicon valley all right even if it's um even if it's youtubers most of them are in miami or austin in america all right if it's in the uk most of them are in london he said once in a while you should visit the places where the best of the best is he said when you visit those places two things happen to you number one it builds your confidence and then number two it makes you realize that these guys are human beings if they can do it i can do it <laughs> <laughs> oh my god and the last point is how to get good idea i said change your context travel 
you can also, quite, you can also travel uh, with topic space. You know, in other words, read different kinds of books and you'll get great ideas that way. So that brings us to the end of this episode of the Paul Fu Podcast. I thought this was brilliant. So if you enjoyed this, write a comment, leave a heart, and share this with your friends and family members if you thought this was great. Um, I, I, well, I'm putting a lot of work in this. If you are listening to this on YouTube, click on the subscribe button. Subscribe to the to my YouTube channel. Tell people that this guy is dropping some value here that I think will help you grow. So thank you very, very, very much. And again, click on the show notes to join my WhatsApp group where I teach sales and marketing every single day. And also to register your business using VPay. Open a business account with VPay. All right. So, yeah. So, those of you who are listening to this on Instagram, 